Greetings everyone, Slurgical here. Welcome to this tutorial that is not a tutorial. This is my painting journey. I don't really know much about uh, miniature painting. I don't have a lot of experience with that. I watch tons and tons of tutorial online by amazing miniature and hobbyists that are skilled beyond words. Instead of doing the whole gamut of the terrain I promoted, I'll be focusing on an item set and as time goes by and I get faster and better at this, I'll be including more painting within each video. Well, I pretty much primed everything in black, as you can see here. I'm going to start with the containers and I'm going to be using straight up colors like yellow, green, red, and hopefully I'll find the blue one, but we'll see as we go. Oh, I will also be using some metallics. Look at that. I found blue. By accident, by the way, because my place is a mess. Well, for my first attempt of uh, painting something and recording it, I think I believe I did it off screen. I'll have to go and rewatch recording. But you get the idea. I'm doing a bit of a sloppy job here, and I'm going to be doing a second uh, coating just to give it some form of... Uh, solid base and then after that i'm going to start doing it a bit grim dark i'll i'll uh, put the wash i'll put some painting some features like the handles in the silver and then or maybe brown we'll have to see and uh we'll go from there now it's time for the green one and i'm not gonna show you and go through every single uh painting stroke I'm just going to show you the, just the basic stuff to convey the idea. I'm just going to have to bear with that. This is not training videos, it's just how I paint and my journey into painting. And hopefully you guys will be giving me some feedback and how to better do what I'm trying to do. You're probably going to say, hey, lame brain. Why didn't you start with the yellow first? It's a lighter color. Yeah, I guess I could, but I'm still pretty nervous about all this. So we'll see how it goes. Here goes the yellow and the lame brain part where the green mix up a little bit. That's okay. And I should probably glue the object on a base so it's easier to handle. I guess this will be on my next uh, painting video. MS Paint is another one that has really inspired me to do this. He does such a great work and his narrative is so great. And this is one thing I'm going to be adding as we go along. A narrative to my painting stuff because a lot of the terrain that I create it's based on RPG games that I've ran or I played in. Characters that I created, places that I made up. As I paint I'll be telling the stories of those characters and those places like you know with like a outpost there'll be a narrative about it. So yellow is done and drinking coffee. Yeah I have to say I'm a big fan. As a family game night, we often play Dead of Winter, and it's such a great and fun game. We play the short scenario, the medium and the long ones, and it's always been a blast. Now I'm going to go on to the red paint. We'll see how this applies. Like all this terrain has been uh, primed with an airbrush. I want to get used to the airbrush and not get too comfortable using the the rattle cans as everybody calls them because once i moved from uh, fdm printing into uh, resin printing and the details are much better and uh, i want to be able to be comfortable with the airbrush by then so i can paint details with the airbrush but that's a uh, journey on, on its own. 
I find it interesting that with the different colors from the same brand of paint, how the colors apply differently. Well, I felt like having some purple and didn't want to make it. And since I have some purple, although it's not craft paint, it's a fancy pants, expensive uh, citadel, citadel paint, I do want purple. So we'll see how that looks. Wow. It does apply as a solid. Good job. There's budgets for everything and paint can definitely take a good chunk out of that budget. So it just takes a bit more time and more learning because if everything applies perfectly, you don't learn from mistakes. And then if you come across something that you're not used to, well, you'll be out of luck. So a lot of the pro they tells you they tell you to use a number this and number that for paintbrush and it's great it's awesome it's great information I'm not at a point where I understand what all those things are oh, I'm gonna do the brown now and we'll see once I'm done with the brown I'm gonna repainting all this on a set with a second coat except for that amazing purple. For my second coat, I'm gonna be a bit smarter. I'm gonna start with the yellow, then I will continue with the darker colors. Well, when I look at the shininess, the blue seems pretty dry. The green is getting there. The purple is pretty much dry, but I don't need a second coat on that one. The yellow is the, seems to be the softest so far because the, the brown is starting to uh, dry up a bit. Much better. That's probably because the paint is not dry. Just getting ahead of myself, being all excited and wanting to move on. I'm also a bit behind on my video by a week, so I'm a bit in a rush to get this thing done. So the second coat of blue went really, really well. I'm gonna move on to the green now. And I noticed when I was doing the blue is I forgot one of the sides. So with the second coat, I guess you can find out stuff that you missed, you forgot. You just have to remember to go back to it. The second coat of blue went really well. The green seems to be a bit uh, difficult. We'll get there. Anyway, I'm going to be doing a black wash on top of all that after. Then I'm going to be weathering with uh, some, some stapling of uh, metallic. To show that this has been bumped around and it's been traveled. I also will be doing some dry brushing. I know a lot of you guys were going to tell me, hey, you know, there's a wet palette. And yeah, I do agree there's a wet palette. And I played around with it a little bit, but I'm still uncomfortable with this whole thing. So I'm just going to start with the basic this way. I have a wet palette already ready to go. And uh, when I'll get to smaller details, like for example, the Ithaca Outpost, there's a little engraving in the walls that are really neat. And I would like to experiment with these engraving, making them like if they glow out from it, from the terrain itself. So I will be using, I'm going to attempt the wet palette with this once I get a bit more comfortable with this. So by the time this video is done, hopefully I'll have some more uh, confidence and uh, make that jump. Now I'm going to go on to the red. The same spot where the red is still wet, but this is in the grooves, not on the main surface. So it should be fine. If it's not, well, lesson learned. And this is just absolutely awesome. Loving every single bit of it. I'm still pretty nervous with the camera as well. So 
I'm hoping that uh, I'm not too monotonic and for all the 20 times I looked at the, the my table, I didn't even notice that. And usually I'm pretty good at noticing details. But if you put the combination of all that is going on, you miss things. And that's okay. Once I put the wash, a lot of those ugly, uh, forgetful things that I've done and missed strokes and all that stuff will be vanishing. Because I did do a couple of uh, miniature miniatures and I applied uh, solid colors to those miniature. And the moment I put those washes on it, it's like, wow, I look like a pro. And get all cocky and all say, hey, la, 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 la. I'm, I'm a superstar. Just a stupid star at this moment. Yeah, I did a pretty much a second coat on everything except for the purple. That the first coat is just solid, and um, and the yellow. I haven't done the yellow yet as a second coat. Well, I attempted it, but it was still too wet, and I just made a mess of things. So let's figure it out. Primed it white if I want to do yellow. So note to the future: if I plan to do anything yellow. I will prime it white first and see. I'm suspecting it's going to be a lot better. And that's not because um, I know what I'm doing. It's because I watch a lot of tutorials. Which this, if you want to really think of this as a tutorial, think of it as a tutorial of mistakes. And then you'll learn something. So I'm going to give it one last shot with a yellow with a third layer. It's not doing much. The black is still showing. I put it aside because I'm going to start my washes with the other ones. All right, I'm going to go on with the washes now. We'll see how that works. Just gonna dab it. Yeah, it's dirty like I want it to be. That's awesome. Let's go with the green. Snuck the wash. Okay, the blue, the blue really turned out really great. Time to wreck it. Yeah, the one thing I always found intimidating and pretty scary is when all those awesome guys doing the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work, and then they throw some washes on it, and it's like, ugh, how? How is that going to turn out? And it always does. It's really, truly magic. done. Let's do the purple. I 
looks like a complete paint on it. Just so great. Absolutely love it. So we got the brown. It looks pretty beat up. The blue. Oh, I forgot the sides here. I'll have to revisit all of them. I should probably use gloves so I don't leave fingerprints, but the surface is not smooth, so I doubt it's going to be finger marked, but hey, we'll find out at the end. It's red, finishing up with that. I think I'm going to do the, the handles in chrome or silver. Well, we're going to let that dry. Actually, I'm going to try the orange. I mean, the, the yellow. I know it's... I just painted it, but like did the... We'll see. Just have to rub it a little bit more, I guess. Use some of the wash that's on the paper. Yeah, it looks looks awesome. Actually, it looks better. So it seems to be taking me forever to do just this. So realistically, because I don't want this to take. Uh, Two three hours for people to watch for watch someone who doesn't really know what they're doing they're learning along the way and doing things so i can actually be helping people now i'm just gonna do uh, my next step is just to put the metal scratches on it so i'll be using uh, metallic color and i want to do those handles in metallic as well i'm going to start with the yellow just to Get a little bit of practice. Let's see how that works. And on uh, whatever mistake I made with the paintbrush, I'm going to try to get that part with uh, the metallic. Get some of the corners because those are going to be the mostly banged up during transport or battle or... Do this one. The purple. Yeah, the weathering didn't really work that well on the purple. The wash, I mean. Just to see on the blue. Don't want to do too much. There's a paintbrush mistake here. I 
on the red. The green, there's some paint marker here, paint strokes. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks, looks fun. You know, happy with that. I don't want too much of it. So now I'm just going to do it with a paintbrush. I'll use this one to do the handles. I hope it's going to not. It's not going to take away from uh, the other stuff. Practice on the yellow. Let's see. Oh, this is not the handle. This is the handle. Yeah, okay. We'll do that. That works. Perfect. Top and the bottom. Yeah, that looks so awesome. It's exactly what I wanted. And my finger touching will just make the scratches a bit more realistic, I guess. I hope. Perfect. Oops. Didn't want to distract from this. It's fun. Oh, those things are looking like real things instead of little
piece of plastic that was printed in 3D. Yeah, this is absolutely awesome. Absolutely loving this. Did I do them all? Oh, the blue. And that's pretty much it. And I think this is it for this video. The next one I'm going to aim to do the bed part this bunk because i'm really curious about how i'm going to do the the bed sheets i've never done that before so it's a perfect opportunity to do this and later this week i will have uh, the next video that's going to be posted is going to be framework really excited about framework Well, thank you for being part of this journey, and I invite you to watch my next video. Until then, Slurgical out.